My name is McQuilliam Smoothly Tutcherson, world traveler and vacation connoisseur. Perhaps you've heard of me? I have only the finest tastes in locale, and today I expertly present to your eyeballs, ear holes, and taste buds a comprehensive critique of my time spent in Braville, Cyrodiil. Often called the unpolished turd of the Nibbon Bay, Braville boldly steals visual real estate from the beautiful lake shore, its brown crumbling spires heaping themselves colorlessly upon the horizon. The first thing I always attend to when visiting a new city is making a beeline for the stables. I'm a horse empath, you see, also known as horpathy. I have the ability to speak to horses. Unfortunately, this does not allow them to communicate with me. However, a horse that refuses to look you in the eyes is always a bad sign. What did they do to you, boy? What did they do? Approaching the city's rickety bridge that passes for the locals, I suppose, as an entrance, I pause to ask the guard stationed at its mouth a question. What do you want? But his abrupt and rude demeanor off put me immediately. To my surprise, a horse blocked my path, smack dab in the middle of the bridge. Not only was its feces scattered all over the rotting wood, the horse was in a catatonic state, almost rotting away before my eyes, as if it hadn't moved for weeks. Well, I am an exceedingly kind and generous critic, and thusly I did not allow these less than favorable first impressions tarnish the rest of my trip to Reville. Though immediately upon entering the city proper, I was met with the despicable sight of a horrid unwashed beggar. I'm so hungry. Who had the audacity to complain about his hunger immediately after souring my nostrils with his wretched scent. Quite frankly, I wanted to vomit, but I elected to wait until I found the inn, to maintain some semblance of dignity and to be an example to those who were clearly in such dire need of a lesson in elegance and refinery. I approached what seemed to be the town's plaza, with a dried up fountain in the center that smelled of cigarettes and burnt hair. And then I witnessed something rather peculiar. A lizard-like creature, squatting down, beast as it was, marching off to some unknown location. I was oddly drawn to the creature and its hobbled gait, and I pondered whether such a thing possessed the free will necessary to have a destination in mind. Uncharacteristically curious, I must admit, I followed the filthy animal. Soon I realized that the unknowable machinations of the stooge were leading it right towards the church. At first I was surprised they would let such a thing into a holy building, but that was before I realized that nothing in the city of Braville has the potential to be considered sacred. Fresh game. Nevertheless, I followed the creature indoors and watched in abject horror as the beast immediately pickpocketed the filthy beggar staining the church's pews. Filthy pickpocket! What did you take? Ha! Huh. Members of the Thieves Guild in our fair town? What makes you think that? Never! Absurd! Such fine law-abiding citizens are we all! I sought to console the woman, dirty as she was, as my good deed of the day. However, she wouldn't stop talking to me about her missing husband. My husband, Alaron, is missing. What kind of horrible place is this? At this point in my tour of the city, I simply desired to find the inn as quickly as I could. In my haste to do so, I found myself in the company of a troop of crack addicts, who could scarcely stop drinking their skooma long enough to speak to me. It was clear to me then that this town was not a place where I belong. But I, McQuilliam Smoothly Tutcherson, have a duty to the people of TravelCyrodil.net to comprehensively critique any and all vacation destinations, no matter the cost. The bravery that swelled within me was enough to carry me inside the dingy tavern. Oh, the stench. And yet I found the strength to purchase a bed for the night for twenty gold pieces. An unbelievably overpriced establishment, but I didn't care. Hurry up before I change my mind. On the wall of my room was a painting of a different, much better city, and haphazardly knocked over was a complimentary basket, which was a suitable vessel for the vomit I had been holding in throughout my tour. <laughs> And with that, I collapsed onto the bed for approximately 15 hours. When I awoke, I purchased a pumpkin for breakfast and tried to ignore the bottles of cheap wine scattered on the ground. The innkeep told me about a local tradition of kissing the statue in the plaza, which I did just to feel something. It was a bit romantic, I will say. But I could feel the diseases hit me like a physical cloud of miasma. The thought that I might actually die in the city of Braville from a disease I had never heard of sent unholy shivers down my spine. But I continued on, towards the city's only other attraction, this statue that nobody knows the name of. A guard was stationed there, most probably to prevent the local lizard population from stealing it. It was okay. Three out of five. 
The next activity I participated in was exploring these ruins right outside the city's gates, which may interest the budding archaeologist. Lord knows the locals don't care whether you desecrate the tombs of their ancestors. The only other place in Breville that piqued my interest was the castle, so I elected to pay a visit to the Count and perhaps tell him what I thought of his city. The castle grounds were admittedly much nicer than the rest of the town. There was a garden courtyard that I would have thought was pleasant if it weren't for the same stench that plagued the rest of the city. In the garden was a big rock, because I suppose this big rock is one of the most beautiful things in this city. Hello! How are you? The Count's Hall was staffed by a relatively polite guard for a change, though the same cannot be said about the Count himself. Regulus Terentius, Count Breville. Good of you to introduce yourself, stranger, but no point, really. I'm the Count, and you have no business talking to the Count, right? Good. All straightened out. Off with you, then. Yes, yes, Count of Breville. Are you a foreigner? Do yourself a favor. Learn the basics about the places you visit. <laughs> there. Problem solved. I flew into a rage. I don't know what came over me. I began stealing all his forks and spoons, knocking over the silverware. I couldn't control myself. I fled from the castle and out of the town as quickly as I could. The things I saw on the streets of Breville will haunt me for the rest of my life. Three out of five. A little something for everyone. Oh dear. <laughs>